Hello there, uh, welcome to another talk. <clears throat> and today's talk is called Loyalty in Romance is an Ego Stroke. Uh, and that's what it is. Lots of things are ego strokes, but that's one of them as well. You can't get away from ego strokes because you can't get rid of your ego. As soon as you get rid of one ego, you just got another ego. But, <clears throat> yeah, loyalty and romance is an ego stroke. And you know, people, people, don't, people, you know, they don't understand that even if she's loyal to you physically, let's say you're living with a woman, then you're still going to randomly think of other people, she's going to do the same, you might dream, and she's going to do the same. So you're always interacting, I said this in my last talk, that you're always always having romantic connections in the 5D, in the astral realms, the dream realms. It's, all, it's always happening, you see? So, with that being said, is she really being loyal to you if she's with you physically? No, she's not, because she's she's going to think of other people. She's going to romanticize, fantasize in the in the five D, the astral. You know, that's always going on. So, you know, <clears throat> it means that. You know, this, this this loyalty thing, you need to get that out of your head. It doesn't exist in term, when it comes to romance and that kind of thing. You know, and India, I've mentioned this before, they now have group marriages because they understand that you're not loyal to one person. You're not, and it's, it's, it's a load of rubbish. It's a load of bollocks. Uh, you might have a stronger connection with someone or if it's a twin flame connection but it still doesn't mean you're going to be totally loyal to them it just means it's a stronger connection but just because it's a stronger connection doesn't mean loyal that doesn't mean you're going to be loyal and, and vice versa but and I think that this is very important to talk about because, you know, this is something people need to get out of their heads. You know, this delusional thing of, of, of uh, you know, wanting someone to be loyal to you in that kind of situation. And it's, and it's not true. They, can, they can't ever be loyal to you. Right, so, you know, let go of that idea. You see, and, and this thing that, that, that is making you cling to that, to that idea and think, oh, that she needs to be loyal totally to me. Like I say, get, you know, why do you need her to be loyal to you? Why? You know, if you actually meditate <clears throat> on that issue, that's you know, you know, making you be like that. If you meditate on that issue, you know, you'll get you. You, you know, you're not going to get rid of your ego, but that particular type of ego is hurting you. And behind it, behind this need 
for someone to be loyal to you, there's a fear that they're not going to be loyal to you. And if you meditate deeper, you're getting to the core problem, which is that fear. And that fear arose not from the need to be loyal or even or even the idea that she should be like that, but it's come from an experience that is now into your psyche which has caused you to be frightened. I mean, this is just an example. Imagine uh, I went for past life regression. This is when I was a lot younger. And I was a soldier and I got blown up in war. I, I, I even went through the experience of being blown up in war and, you know, literally fight in one minute and blow up the next. I, maybe that, I think that's why I, I've, I've got a thing for military clothes. I've always had this thing for military clothes. And uh, maybe that's my way of healing from that. And But that's this is just an example. And then, but in your other lives, you're going to have that fear is going to be there. And, and I've noticed this, this shakiness all, uh, and it only started to go away once I started the awakening thing. I used to think it was other people, but now I realise it, it was actually within me. So since the, the spiritual awakening 10 years ago, I've been doing a lot of inner healing. But so your need for things and your shakiness, your frightenedness within you, is related to something that's happened to you. The way to hack in, to heal it, is as soon as you feel the fear, you know, to meditate on it. Uh, and then this is how you heal those, those... These are chakra blockages also. You know, you know, they can cause all sorts of problems, stomach problems, you know. Everything comes from, like, German New Medicine proved how all illness comes from they called it shock traumas being blown up in war as an example and uh, I was always when I, when I was younger a very nervous individual you know so I would I would I, I was a compulsive liar and and all the things that I was I'm the total opposite now but there's still that those fears. The some of them are still there, but there's a lot less than was there. But that could be related, and I'm just using this as, a, as an example. And so when you meditate on that, right? You meditate on the fear. You're able to to to. That's how you soothe it. This is the other reason why they demonize sex. I've said this before because that's another way to heal. Uh, you know, and they demonize, they make a mockery out of sex and sexuality and stuff like that. And the reason they do that is because that is one of the most potent healers, you see? So they make it into a perverted thing rather than a romantic thing. Uh, that That's what they do because the system at the top doesn't want us ascending but again I say this a lot that's just part of the illusion because everything has to come from nothingness and nothingness can't be defined so it means that your life it's all a dream and it's all you and everything you're experiencing is you so in this awakening as I've been coming to this truth more and more it's been about letting go I've been letting go because of it, because in the awakening, realizing that you're, you're just everything. You're not a separate individual. You're not all these labels. You are the one infinite nothingness. You are the absolute. And this helps you let go of this this need for people to be loyal to you. Uh, and stuff like that. That doesn't mean I forgive totally in forgiveness willy-nilly. I mean, I posted this earlier today. I, I believe that that kind of behavior is, is false virtue. I do not believe in forgiveness like that. I believe in healing and letting go, but I think that people need to, need to pay. You know, because how else are they supposed to learn? You know, that's why there's such thing as karma and karma, you know, uh, to teach you a good lesson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the universe, the God's way of doing it, source. But you are the God, as I'm saying. 
But as you, you know, this is related to this talk because it's all about healing yourself. And then you let go for this need for people to be loyal, loyal to you. Because the truth is, they are you. You see? They're all you. And the different reactions that you're having, negative reactions, are things that you, you must, you, you're being triggered as a reminder to go within yourself and heal. And then you'll come to the realization, like the title of this talk, that loyalty and romance is an ego stroke. All ideas are made up, and when you cling to them, uh, even I could say, like I just said a moment ago, forgiveness is, is, is a false virtue. That's my idea. It's all made up. You see, and when you realize you're just the one infinite nothingness, you let go more and more, not of the ego, because even thinking that you're nothing, well, thinking that nothing's a nothing, that is an identification of what nothingness is. And that's an ego attached to that. You see? Once you realize nothing can't be defined, then you realize nothing can be defined. You know, definition is, is another illusion. And this is how, and this is how you let go of this need for for people to be loyal to you, because that hurts you when you when you want a, a romantic partner to be loyal to you or a friend or something or anything, anyone. It hurts you when they're not, because you're stuck in this egoic idea of what they should be like. You see. So. These talks that I do, they're all like meditations. This is the way that I, I talk on my talks is the way that I am in real life. The way I am with myself, uh, with others. So I'm a mum's registered carer, as I said before in my talk, so it must be a very healing experience, I guess. For me also, because the, the caring thing has taught me about selflessness which was a is a very important element of love as well. But and and as that that as well, you know, selflessness. That lets go of this need for people to be loyal to you. This is very important. And then when you let go enough, you enter this bliss, which is just peace, of not needing anything or anyone. And that I believe that's the true. Well, I know that's the that's that's divine. That's the divine source. And that's the love from that power, like like sitting in nature by yourself. But you know you're not really going to enjoy that experience until you let go of these problems, and that's when you're truly present. Like I've said, the presence is the solution, but the solution causes the more problems. You need to let. You need to heal the, the problems. The, the cause of the problem, I should say. And so it's it's about inner healing. Working with yourself as you are in this present moment. If you can't be present, there's a reason for it. Also understanding things as well. Like in the topic of this talk, you know, understanding that you're always thinking of other people, she's, you know, it's going to happen. Because your mind just naturally, you know, you're just awareness and your awareness just naturally flows and people come to your awareness all the time and it's always going on and that's why loyalty in romance is, a, is a, like I say, an ego stroke. But when you look from it from a broader perspective that you're all the same consciousness, you don't look at it from that uh, needy, clingy way. You see? When you were the small ego itself, you still got an ego because you can't get rid of it. But this other ego is more loving, you could say. It's more... It's oneness. And when you're oneness, you don't see yourself as apart from everything else. So you're more accepting. And that's when you that's when you're you're truly happy. 
that's when you're truly happy. But I'm just going to leave it there. For the latest updates, talks, news, research and songs and much, much more, please do check my website at www.lovelightfamily.com. Thank you.